So Alexis Sanchez is the new Manchester United number seven. The Chileans' move to Old Trafford was confirmed on Monday night, with Henry Mkhitaryan heading the other way to Arsenal as part of the deal. The Sanchez saga has been a long and tiring one, but he is now officially a Manchester United player, and a very rich one at that, earning a whopping reported £450,000 a week. But money aside, Sanchez will have the honour of wearing the iconic number 7 shirt at Manchester United, a number that has been worn by some real Man United legends. So today we're going to look at every Manchester United number 7 in the Premier League era and discuss whether or not they were worthy of the shirt. The first official Man United number 7 in the Premier League was Eric Cantona. Permanent squad numbers first became a thing in the Premier League in 1993 and Eric Cantona was handed the number 7 shirt at Old Trafford, a number he held until his retirement. A larger than life character, Cantona not only had the arrogance to be a superstar at Manchester United but to carry the number 7 shirt, strolling around Old Trafford with his collar flicked up like he owned the place. Cantona retired in 1997 at the age of 30, having scored 82 goals for the club, winning 4 Premier League titles and 2 FA Cups. Oh, and he also Kung Fu kicked a fan, but that wasn't quite as good. But despite that, Cantona was certainly worthy of the shirt. The next number 7 was David Beckham. While it was Cantona who kicked a fan, Beckham was the one who got a boot to the face, with his Manchester United days coming to an end around the time Sir Alex Ferguson flung a boot at old golden balls, after an FA Cup defeat to Arsenal in 2003. But before all that, Beckham was a special number 7, having come through the club's academy as part of the infamous Class of 92. While Beckham might be larger than football itself right now, his one of a right foot helped them win countless trophies at Old Trafford with the number 7 on his back, including the famous treble in 1999. He obviously wasn't the enigma that Eric Cantona was, but David Beckham still fit the number 7 shirt. The next number 7 was Cristiano Ronaldo. With David Beckham heading to Real Madrid, there was a vacancy at number 7, and the heavy shirt was placed on very young shoulders, a spotty teenager who went by the name of Cristiano Ronaldo, who actually wanted to be number 28. But the shirt didn't phase the baby-faced Portuguese winger, and the former number 7 legend George Best hailed his first appearance against Bolton as undoubtedly the most exciting debut he'd ever seen. From there, Ronaldo went on to become the best player in the Premier League and one of the world's elite, scoring 118 goals and 292 appearances for the club. Ronaldo's world-class performances meant Real Madrid came calling and off he went for a world record £80 million, leaving as a Manchester United legend and a man who was not weighed down by the number 7 shirt. The next number 7 was Michael Owen. And thus begins a bad run of Manchester United number 7s, kicking off with former Liverpool striker Michael Owen. He would move to Old Trafford on a free in 2009, spending three seasons with the club where he made a less than sensational 31 league appearances. But fear not financial experts, Owen was on a pay as you play deal, so at least United weren't out of pocket by the end of it. Owen did score a famous derby goal, netting a stoppage time winner in the 4-3 victory over Manchester City in 2009, but on the whole, his career at Manchester United was a bit of a bust, and certainly not one worthy of the number 7 shirt. The next number 7 was Antonio Valencia. While Valencia is now held in high regard by Manchester United fans and captions the side in Michael Carrick's absence, the Ecuador international was never at the required standard to be a Man United number 7. He joined from Wigan in 2009 and in his fourth season with the club was handed the famous number 7 shirt, despite not really doing enough beforehand to prove he was at the same level as some of his predecessors. Unsurprisingly, Valencia had a below par season with the 7 on his back and instead of persevering, reverted back to his original number 25 the following campaign. A failed experiment, but Valencia's transition from right wing to right back was much more seamless. The next number 7 was Angel Di Maria. After the disappointment of Michael Owen and Antonio Valencia, it looked like Man United were back on track when they signed Angel Di Maria from Real Madrid for a then British record fee of £59.7 million. The Argentinian midfielder immediately shone in red, making a bright start to his career in the Premier League, but soon the wheels fell off. His woes on the pitch translated to woes off it, with Di Maria unable to settle in England, notably after his Cheshire home was the scene of an attempted burglary. After just one season at Old Trafford, Di Maria left the club, joining PSG for £44 million, leaving as a failed Manchester United number 7. And finally, the next number 7 was Memphis Depay. In 2015, Manchester United signed Memphis Depay from PSV for £25 million, where the Dutch winger had lit up the Eredivisie and potentially looked like a future world beater. Donning the number 7, Depay scored a brace early on in his Man United career against Club Bruges, showcasing the arrogance and self belief to be a Manchester United number 7. Sadly, though, this Depay went missing, and in his place, a show pony who had all the tricks but not a player worthy of the Manchester United number 7 shirt. 
After 18 months at the club, Depay was sold to Lyon by Jose Mourinho and the number 7 shirt had a 12 month hiatus after consecutive flops in the iconic shirt. But now the number 7 shirt is back and it'll be worn by Alexis Sanchez. Can he do it justice or will he crack under the pressure? So that's Manchester United's number 7s from the Premier League era. Let us know how you think Sanchez will get on in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.